Sometimes people think that biodiversity is just about rare species, but actually biodiversity is the entire living fabric of this planet. So biodiversity includes ecosystems, all the types of ecosystems and the area that is covered by them. It includes species, which means not only the number and the variety, but also the quantity. In other words, how much fish in the seas, how many animals in, in the forests, and so on. And it includes genes. It includes the genetic material of, of species, because it is from that genetic material that we get medicines. So biodiversity is all of that, all of these things together. Yeah. TEEB uh, stands for the economics of ecosystems and biodiversity, T-E-E-B. And TEEB is basically a project which intends to explain and find out the value of the services of nature, the value of ecosystem services and of biodiversity benefits to the economy. And at the same time, it also wants to find out and calculate the extent of losses that are taking place in economic terms. In other words, the loss of human welfare as a result of the loss of biodiversity and ecosystem services. So this is the, what TEEB is about and it's an international project. It involves all countries and more than 500 researchers and scientists and economists and social anthropologists are writing for TEEB. I think that's partly what TEEB is about, you know, is to make sure that we calculate these numbers and, and show them to policymakers. because most of the services of nature are public goods. In other words, they are produced by nature and they are received directly by people or by businesses. So you know, we don't have to pay for clean air and, and hardly anything for fresh water and we don't pay for walking into a forest. A uh, company typically does not pay for a stable climate and a secure supply of fresh water and it pays very little for access to minerals and resources. So these are, uh, public, these are partly public goods which we are benefiting from, uh, especially for the poor because the ability for forests to hold moisture and water and release it gradually over the year and the ability to recycle nutrients, in other words, to create uh, fertility, soil fertility and food for plants to use, these are again provided free and especially in poor countries where uh, agriculture and the fertility of soil and the ability of fresh water to be received by fields depends on the availability of good ecosystems and forests. So it's important that we explain all this to governments and that governments realize that uh, protecting nature and its services is about conserving public wealth because all these things are public wealth because they belong to people overall, not to you or to me personally, but yeah. to the people, right? So it's public wealth, it's not private wealth. Mm -hmm. um, and because it is public wealth, it is the responsibility of government to look after it. Because ultimately it is the government which is responsible for public wealth. Yeah. And that's, that's why TEEB has many, many ideas as to how to protect nature mm -hmm. in a way that is economically positive. In other words, that generates and increases human well-being. I'm hoping at least two things. I'm hoping, one, that there is a real recognition and uh, a regional action on coral reefs because coral reefs are seriously under threat due to, uh, mainly due to uh, emissions because carbon dioxide emissions are too much in the atmosphere and at these levels uh, coral reefs will not be able to survive. But also there are local factors that affect coral reefs like blast fishing, uh, like cyanide poisoning, like runoffs of chemicals from industrial areas into reef waters, and like sedimentation. So these things can be addressed by the countries. And uh, one good example of that is the Coral Triangle Initiative of six countries, including Indonesia and the Philippines, which is in Southeast Asia. And I would like uh, Nagoya to table these examples and to ask for more regional cooperation groups for example, in the Caribbean, for example, the European Union's uh, coral colonies, and so on. So that's one area. Uh, the second area I would like uh, progress to be made in Nagoya is on access and benefit sharing, because where foreign companies access uh, local forests and, and local reefs for genetic material to help them make the base for medicines, new medicines, 
then they need to pay a fair price for that. And it has to, the price has to be paid to the owners of traditional knowledge, the, the local people. And right now there is no uh, global structure or mechanism which enables that to happen. It is pretty much left to uh, bilateral negotiation. And very often negotiations like that are not fair to the local community. So I'm hoping that in, in Nagoya, uh, a global uh, scheme will be devised, a global framework will be created, which helps access and benefit sharing to be done on a fair and equitable basis. So these are my two hopes from Nagoya, two main hopes, I should say. But I have a small third hope, that the T project also becomes better understood by people.